What is integration? Imagine you're trying to find the area beneath a curve. One way to approximate it is by drawing rectangles underneath the curve and summing their areas. The more rectangles you add, the more accurate your approximation becomes. Integration asks, what happens when we use infinitely many rectangles, each with an infinitesimally small width, and sum up their areas? In this approximation, the width of each rectangle is a tiny change in x, which we call delta x. The height of each rectangle is determined by the value of the function at that point. To find the area of each rectangle, you multiply its width by its height. Then, by summing these rectangles across the interval between two points, which we call A and B, we get an estimate of the total area. But if we let delta x become infinitesimally small, we use dx instead. At this point, the summation symbol changes to an integral sign, which is like a smooth version of the summation symbol. This is the concept of integration, but how do we actually integrate? Take a function, for example, where x is raised to the power of n. The most common way we integrate this type of function is by using something called the power rule. The process is simple. 1. Add 1 to the power of x. 2. Divide by the new power. 3. Don't forget to add a constant, which we'll call c. Now let's address why this works. It's important to know that the power rule for integration actually came before the power rule for differentiation. Integration was developed first, even though most students learn differentiation first. The key figure here is Leibniz, whose notation we mostly use today. But Newton and Cavalieri also worked on these ideas independently. To understand the power rule, let's look at a few examples. Start with a simple function, where x is raised to the power of 0. This means the function is just a constant, 1. The area under this flat line, from 0 to x, is simply x. This tells us that the integral of 1 is x. Next, consider the function where x is raised to the power of 1. The area under this curve forms a triangle, which has an area of 1 half multiplied by x squared. So the integral of x is x squared divided by 2. At this point, you might notice a pattern. When x is raised to the power of 0, the result is x to the power of 1 divided by 1. When x is raised to the power of 1, the result is x to the power of 2 divided by 2.